From his iconic moonwalk to his own video game, Michael Jackson was, is, and will undoubtedly be an immortal idol of the masses. There's much more than controversy around his life, because the singer and dancer was also a pioneer in many ways. And not only that, but also, according to what one of his former bodyguards has just revealed, Michael was also a visionary, or even a prophet, because apparently, the king of pop predicted all this mess that's happening around the world right now. Wait, what? You better stay with me, and I'll tell you about the prophetic fears of Michael Jackson. But first, of course, subscribe to CurioSips and turn on the notifications to stay up to date. Now let's start. It's no secret to anyone that controversy and tragedy haunted the whole life of Michael Jackson, who was born in Gary, Indiana on August 29, 1958. It all started in his childhood, when because of his father's mistreatment, little Michael and his brothers were exploited at work and completely robbed of their childhood. Well, if you are a massive fan, you probably already know that neither Michael nor his brothers would call the man who gave them life dad, but they always had to call him by his name, Joseph. Because of the difficult first years of his life, Michael grew up with a lot of insecurities and also developed a Peter Pan syndrome. This means that Michael never wanted to become an adult. He even once said that he was never allowed to play, have friends, or attend parties. It was all work, work, and more work. But after having achieved great success with his brothers in the Jackson 5, Michael decided to start a solo career, and he quickly became an international star. Ever since his first album, Off the Wall, came out in 1979, Michael had been recognized as a young and promising R&B star. He won only two Grammys, and his album sold only 20 million copies. I know, which artist wouldn't like to achieve this with their debut album? But we're talking about Michael Jackson, and for him, that was unacceptable. Because something that characterized him was how hard he always was on himself. I mean, Michael was his own toughest critic. And also, as I mentioned at the beginning, as the visionary that he was, he probably predicted that he would become the legend that he was and still is. The strong self-criticism was worth it, because in 1982, Thriller, his second album, won eight Grammys, and to this day it's still considered the most successful album in history, with more than 60 million copies sold. From that moment on, Michael was on endless world tours, starred in movies and TV commercials, produced records and more records, and, yep, unfortunately he was also involved in a lot of scandals, rumors, and gossip. One of the first things that caused controversy was his dance moves that would later become his trademark. In fact, there's a theory that suggests that the famous moonwalk wasn't invented by Michael Jackson. Yeah, you heard it right. Now, I repeat, it's just a theory. The thing is that Michael admitted that he always carefully watched some classical movie dancers like Fred Astaire, although he never mentioned Bill Bailey, who already in 1955, that is, three years before Michael was born, had already been performing the dance that placed the King of Pop on top. However, those weren't the only accusations of plagiarism. Michael also had to stand up for himself on other occasions when he was accused of copying or at least being inspired by other artists' lyrics and melodies when making some of his songs. But fortunately, he was always able to reach a settlement before going to trial. However, the accusations of imitation and plagiarism weren't the only controversial aspects in Michael's life. It's also his multiple visits to the operating room, some necessary, others for aesthetic reasons. His first surgery took place in 1984, when, while filming a commercial for Pepsi, the company he signed a $5 million contract with, Michael suffered second-degree burns to his face and head due to a glitch in the lights on the set. Even though Michael was immediately taken to the hospital, he had to undergo several reconstructive surgeries, and he also had to wear a wig for quite a long time. In fact, rumor has it that part of his hair never grew back, but I said that not all the surgeries were necessary, because starting in the late 70s, Michael decided to slightly modify the shape of his nose. That part of his face had always made him insecure, since his father always pointed it out and even called him Big Nose. 
After that first surgery, and also after the Pepsi incident, Michael had to have his nose operated on again, and it surely gave him headaches because sometime later during a dance rehearsal, he broke his nose, and because of that, he was obsessed with his appearance even more. And well, the rumors about the alleged controversial whitening of his skin are even worse. But despite all that was said about it, Michael stated that he had vitiligo. And that's nothing more than a skin condition that causes changes in the skin color. And in many cases, it occurs after long periods of strong stress. And as we've already seen, Michael didn't exactly lead a very peaceful life. Although today this disease is much better known, and therefore more normalized, in those years it was still looked at with contempt and even treated with a certain disgust. And well, in the case of the King of Pop, I better not even tell you how he was treated. And since we're talking about rumors surrounding the legend, surely some of you remember the so-called oxygen chamber in which Michael Jackson slept to stay young. Well, guess what? It was nothing more than a rumor created by the singer himself to gain more attention, as if he needed that. However, it was not all gossip and fictional stories. There have also been verified facts and unbeatable records. At the beginning, I told you that in addition to being an extraordinary singer and dancer, Michael was also a pioneer in many ways. For example, he was the first African-American singer to appear on MTV with his Billie Jean music video in 1983. By the way, did you know that this song was inspired by a true story of a fan who stalked Michael? Well, Michael Jackson's popularity reached the point that the then video game giant Sega launched Moonwalker, a game completely inspired by Michael Jackson and owned by the singer. But unfortunately, then the year 1993 came and the first infamous allegations of abuse appeared. I'm not going to get too deep into this topic, but I mentioned it for a reason. And it's that in 1994, a year after those embarrassing and shameful accusations surfaced, with the intention of improving his image, Michael surprised everyone and married Lisa Marie Presley, the daughter of the king of rock and roll, Elvis Presley. However, the marriage was very short because they got divorced in 1996. But a few months later, Michael remarried. This time it was with Debbie Rowe, his personal dermatologist's assistant, and in the following years, Debbie gave birth to the singer's first two children. However, there are still many doubts when it comes to Michael being the father. Although, what we do know, thanks to Debbie, is that he only married her to have children. At least, that's what she said. Their divorce in 1999 confirmed all the press rumors. And in 2002, an anonymous surrogate gave birth to Michael's third child, nicknamed Blanket. And speaking of the latter, surely some of you will remember that incident when Michael held his baby over the railing of the balcony of a hotel room. And although later he admitted that it was a mistake, the truth is that the artist never liked to show the faces of his offspring, and he almost always covered them with masks. That way, no one would recognize them on the street, and they could lead a normal life. And we finally got to the main point. Now that I mentioned the masks that Michael put on his offspring to hide their faces, he not only did it with them, but it was also quite common to see him wearing one. But he did it for completely different reasons. Or at least that's what one of his bodyguards said recently. His name is Matt Fidesz, and he was in charge of Michael's security for many years, to be exact, for more than a decade. Thanks to that, during all that time, he got to discover secrets of the controversial singer and many of his strange habits. However, for obvious reasons, undoubtedly the face masks are one of the things that attract the most attention due to the virus that's spread around the planet today. According to the 41-year-old man's words, Michael was aware that a natural disaster or pandemic such as the one that we're currently experiencing was hiding somewhere. But it was definitely the second thing that worried Michael the most, which is why he often wore a mask when he was on tour. He wanted to avoid getting infected with the viruses and germs that were in the air and around him. Matt told The Sun that, as a joke, he asked his former boss not to wear the mask when he was close to him because he was embarrassed to be photographed next to him. In addition, Matt also said that the singer wasn't concerned only about his own health, but also of his fans. 
But Michael was also aware that, to many, he seemed to be completely obsessed with the ridiculous sanitary rules. According to the former bodyguard, Michael would say, Matt, I can't get ill. I can't let my fans down. I've got concerts coming up. I'm on this earth for a reason. I mustn't damage my voice. I've got to stay healthy. I don't know who I'm going to encounter today. I don't know what I might pass on. But what Matt wanted to make clear was that, in his opinion, Michael wasn't a germaphobe but simply wanted the best for people and he was really frustrated that no one took his measures seriously. What do you think? Wasn't Michael quite a visionary who wanted to avoid the worst? With all that's happening now, his strange preventative measures no longer sound too exaggerated, do they? Well guys, remember to subscribe to our channel and leave a thumbs up, and share the video with your friends. Until next time.